every single human in the UK. An attack that is being branded as protection. Human beings are animals. We require human contact, close connection and social bonds, not simply to thrive, but to survive. Research is telling us a terrifying story and one that will be told for many, many years to come. One whose ending will be decided based on moments like today. The damage is being furthered with every passing second. The time bomb is ticking, growing more powerful, more grotesque, with outcomes far bigger and far wider than most of you listening will have even dared to imagine. And if we allow restrictions to continue this way, the death, damage and destruction will only grow. I and so many of my peers believe fiercely that children, more than any other demographic, require safeguarding. Legally and morally, our democratic society should wish to protect children from harm. In fact, the Children's Act clearly and rightly states that children's welfare should be the paramount concern and that physical, emotional, social and educational harm is unacceptable on any level where children are concerned. Safeguarding measures exist so that the health, well-being and human rights of individuals, especially children, young people and the vulnerable are protected so that they can live a life free from harm, abuse and neglect. Yet harm, abuse and neglect is exactly what the current restrictions are causing. The last seven months has seen an exponential rise in reported levels of stress, anxiety and depression, with research finding that 80% of young people are experiencing a decline in their mental health. Suicidal thoughts in young people are also sharply rising. These are children and they are so afraid, so traumatised, so concerned about their future that they are deciding whether to experience a future at all. Self-harm has increased. It is now believed that one in six of our children meet the criteria for a mental health problem. What are we doing? How can we fail our future so dreadfully and failing we are? The messages pumped into our population to terrify so many of us into submission have been reprehensible, unnecessary, and so traumatizing that children's charities are now dealing with COVID PTSD. And even more depressing is that most of these children will fail to receive any help whatsoever because mental health services couldn't cope before this pandemic, before we crippled the whole generation who deserved so much more. The government and the media have taught children to be afraid of living, of playing, of loving. They've even gone as far as telling our impressionable youth that they have the power to kill granny. Imagine what that has done to children who have lost loved ones during this pandemic, even if that was through other conditions. Yet this type of unacceptable conditioning has been allowed to trample all over developing brains of children and young people. One of the biggest killers in the UK is poverty. In fact, poor people die on average 10 years younger than their affluent peers. And yet, who are restrictions affecting most? The poor. And children in poverty are two and a half times more likely to die before they even reach adulthood than those who are affluent. This was what research told us before the coronavirus, before the poverty gap grew wider and bigger than ever before. Children and young people are having their security ripped apart on every level. Their education, which for some children is the only consistent safety and care that they experience, has been utterly desecrated and thrown into chaos. Many children who are struggling with their academic journey have had an irreparable hole blown into their learning. They have had their futures stolen through this unforgivable state neglect. They are watching their parents lose jobs. They will soon watch them lose their homes because restrictions are killing the economy, ruining businesses and devastating the employment landscape, meaning that many adults will struggle to find work again. I look at opinion polls 
And I see the government reacting to a small percentage of the population whose interests are less to do with we and all to do with me. They are not affected by restrictions. They do not feel the pang of hunger or the threat of abuse. So they can enjoy their sunrise and sunset without noticing the agony that lies in less privileged places as restrictions ruling lives. Did you know that 2 million homes in the UK have no access to the internet? And 30 million people rely on pay-as-you-go phones with limited data, meaning that the poorest and most marginalised have no voice. Imagine having no voice. This silence means that they cannot tell you their stories. And their story will unequivocally be to end restrictions so that they can feed their children and remain in the jobs and homes that they deserve to keep. What future are we creating for our children? The slogan, Build Back Better, may have a nice ring to it, thought up in some middle-class PR meeting where no doubt those who came up with it imagined that the Twitterati would hashtag the hell out of it and suddenly all the devastation would just disappear. But in truth, there is no Build Back Better for most of us here in the UK and for some, there will be no Build Back at all. And why are we even at this point? Because aside from week 17 of the pandemic, in mid-April, all cause mortality rates this year are comparable to recent years. And 99% of coronavirus are mild. Yet we continue to destroy the lives and livelihoods of millions of people in the UK. How have we arrived here? And how is this being allowed to continue? Because if I am to draw any conclusions from this situation, it is that the coronavirus restrictions have been branded as being brought in to protect the vulnerable and have done the absolute opposite. In fact, I do see coronavirus as one of the biggest threats to humanity, but only because of the utterly inhumane restrictions that are killing many, many more than they ever came close to protecting. When I read the statistics on child suicide and it lists deaths between the ages of 10 and 19 years of age, 10, 10. I know that society is fundamentally broken. And a society that continues to accept this is barbaric, hostile and anti-democratic. If we continue to support restrictions, knowing the catastrophic collateral damage that is happening with every second that passes at a cost to everything else, then we are knowingly and therefore willingly choosing to kill many other people by many other means, children included, whether that be from suicide, cancer, heart disease, poverty, social isolation or dementia, to name just a few. We cannot turn away from the uncomfortable truth that the government is not only failing to protect us, but now actively choosing to harm us, to harm our children, our parents, our siblings, our friends. They are failing to protect our high streets, our entrepreneurs, our businesses, our futures. And whilst you may find it hard to look that reality in the eye because of what that reality may mean, now is not the time to turn away. Because without you, without all of you, my lone voice is just a whisper. But if you join me and if you stand with us at recovery, then this whisper becomes a roar. Every generation witnesses a moment in time that has the power to change the world. And for us, that moment is now. Stand up for what is right, protect our children, free the elderly from their care home restrictions, allow families to thrive, breathe back life into business and give each and every human being in the UK their God-given right to autonomy, to freedom of choice, because that is democracy. And for all our sakes, it's time to demand it back. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Emma, for that passionate and informative insight.